The Fed will say it's 6.30, 6.30. Um, up on the screen is the walk dates for Emmaus. Please contact Brother Charlie Brown uh, for more information. Praise God. And um, it starts, as you guys can see, in March 25, 28. And then the rest of the dates are on there. Once again, Emmaus is an effective tool that the Lord will use for you to be intimate with Him. Amen. So, you know, so please, you know, pray about it. If you have any questions, ask anybody. Amen. And we'll, we'll be happy to tell you as much as we possibly can in how blessed of a time that is. Um, and Brother Charlie Brown's number is right there. Uh, at Abundant Life Church, as we've been announcing the past couple weeks, March 12th and March 13th is a ladies-only conference. Amen. And uh, it's free. Now, you must pre-register. And I did not, I apologize, I did not stress this in the past couple times. And um, you can, you can pre-register at HealingHeartsMinistryFlorida.com. Or they got the phone number up there, 321, my goodness, 978-9314. Amen. I oh, don't know. Pray for that person who put this graphic together. My goodness. Um, say we need this Friday. Hallelujah. This Friday and almost every Friday, unless there's something going on, maybe like a wedding rehearsal, you know, yeah, or, or some stuff. <laughs> you guys are so cute. There's such a fresh anointing over you both. Praise God. Yes, absolutely, absolutely adorable. Everybody go, aww. aww. That's what I'm talking about. Aww, you guys are so sweet. My goodness. We need to, Trisha and I need to hang out with you all. Everything's great in our marriage. It's good or good or amen. Don't, don't, look, too, don't look too much into that. Now that let's give God praise. Amen. Um, for this Friday evening, I am recovered. You must be 18 or over. Amen. I did get some, I, I did get some lash back on that. Um, and, and also with the no child care. Please, beloved church family. Please understand and respect the fact this is what the Lord wants and this is what we're going to be obedient about. Amen. Um, you will actually be thankful that there's actually an age on there because of the stuff that we discuss in our small groups is very deep, um, very confidential, just an amazing fellowship with the Lord, above all with the Lord and with each other. Um, so once again, that's this Friday at 6 o'clock p.m. Hence, I love using that word, hence the tables are set. Amen. And don't you love that? The Lord sets a table for us, right? Okay. Amen. The Lord sets a table for us. But guess what? You have to come. <laughs> Isn't it beautiful, the Lord? Oh, hallelujah. There's none of this. Well, I'll just stay home and get my blessing. No. The Lord has set a table for you. Amen. Praise God. Let's, uh, let's pray. We got a lot to go through. So please pray for me as I, as I open up in prayer. Um, actually, Holy Spirit just said no. You want, Pastor John, can you open up in prayer? Thank you, Father. And Father, we thank you for such a beautiful day and blessed condition. We thank you for the miracles that each and every one of us has already experienced, Lord, just in the last little bit. And God, we just lift up a pastor to you. We pray you just touch him. Uh, put your loving arms around him. Let the word come strictly from you. I know it will, Lord. And just let us take it to our hearts. Open our hearts and take it in, Lord. And be obedient to do what we learn learned tonight. Be obedient to do what you, you're pouring in our minds and our hearts tonight. Yes. And God has blessed this whole service. We just love you so much. In Jesus' name, and all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you guys. Praise God. Amen. So uh, a couple weeks ago, um, there was a message that the uh, Holy Spirit rocked. He, he rocks my world in every message. And, and that's just my choice. Amen. And it was regarding a gooder and gooder life. Right, regarding a gooder and gooder life. And in that message, we got recovered, resurrected, restored. Now quickly now, this is what Holy Spirit showed us. The devil tries to steal, kill, and destroy. God comes to recover. Say with me, I am recovered. I am recovered. Say with me, I am resurrected. I am resurrected. Say with me, I am restored. I Amen. And this was R3, right? R3, right? It's regarding a gooder and gooder life. See, the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. We just went over what Lord Jesus Christ did for us when he came and what he purchased for us to live this abundant life. And this leads me to what God gave for this evening. Now, all this somehow is going to come together, but I confess to you, tonight it didn't. 
And we've been together almost three years now, and this is one of the first times, if I recall, where I'm like, okay, Lord. And in every worship service, whether it's pastor, myself, whoever the mouthpiece, Elder Charlie, I pray that all of our church family, everybody on Facebook knows, we are just a mouthpiece. I'm not worthy to be up here. I'm not worthy to be your pastor. I'm not worthy for anything. Lord Jesus Christ made us worthy. Amen. Amen. And then, hallelujah. And now we are worthy of every good thing from the Father. Amen. And part of this is something that, it, it, like many of you, have been praying for our nation every day, right? Yep. And with the government, P3 means this right here. Say this with me. Public. Private. Private. private partnership. Private. It's absolutely incredible because after, after the worship service, Brother Brian, after just getting out of my prayer room, praying for the country, lifting up our community, pleading the blood of the Lord Jesus over our church family and over all you all. Amen? And just thanking God that His presence is within us. As soon as I was walking out, Pastor, Holy Spirit says P3. Now, Brother Lance, I don't know P3. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm just like, okay. So, of course, I had to Google. And this is what came up in that, in that government saying, P3. Public-Private Partnership. Looking further into it, it's really cool. It has to do with the government being a private identity, right? Very closed off private. They would contract public help, right, Pastor? Like I speak it over your business, Pastor. Like they would contract you to build subdivisions, right? And it's in that partnership that even though he's public and they're private, it's a contractual agreement. Amen? It's a partnership. And I love that partnership. And and I was just really moved studying this. And then after reading all that, I said, well, well Lord, I never talk politics. <laughs> right? I never do. I, I don't. And, and God says, that's not what I want to talk about. This is what I want to talk about. And this is what he said. Plead, personal, protect. Amen? Plead, personal, protect. Now, rest assured, I want to bless you with this. As far as for this worship service and every worship service, Pastor and I were one, we have to stand before Lord Jesus and answer. I believe that with all heart, I'm shaking to my core. Amen? And I say this because when we, when we worship God this way, please do everything you can to get out of this. Amen? Amen? Do that with me. Because the enemy wants you to creep into your mind and try to figure out, well, I wonder what Brother Joey got to say. It, it has nothing to do with that, what I have to say. God right now wants to bless you with life-changing revelation, and it's about pleading, being personal, and protection. Amen? So praise God. Before we get into this, these are the books that we're going to go through. Hebrews 9, 14, 2 Corinthians 2, verse 14, 2 Timothy 4, verses 16 through 18. Now before we get into Hebrews, I just want to say this real quickly. When you define plea, you may hear a lot of us say it. I, I say it all the time. I plead the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, right? And forgive me, my heart is never to sound super religious with you. My heart is not to sound all Christianese or that I'm holier. I'm not. I am no better than anybody. Can I get an amen? He's the only perfect one, amen? Hallelujah, he's the only perfect one. I'm not, brother Brian, I'm no better than anybody. I just, I just do everything I can to bless my God, amen? And this is what the definition of plead is. Make an emotional appeal. Right? Trish, I plead, I plead, please don't beat me when we get to the car. I'm sorry, I acted like that at Walmart. Right? <laughs> I beg you, Trish, please, right? Please. Right? I plead with you, please, don't, don't put me in the doghouse. I'm sorry I acted like that. I was just hungry. Right? Right? <laughs> Isn't that true? Like your emotions get the best of you, right? When you're hungry or when you're tired. Right? Hangry. That's a good word, bro. Hangry. Make an emotional appeal. And I like this one, the second one. Present and argue for, say this with me, a position. Especially in court or in another public context. Last time I checked, who's our judge? So say it with me. I plead the blood of Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Now let's get into the worship service. Amen. Hebrews 9.14. Please. How much more then will the blood of Christ, 
who through the eternal spirit offered himself unblemished to God. Cleanse our consciousness. Do that again with me. See, this is the anointing of God right here. When you're mindful of Christ, immediately you allow Holy Spirit's anointing, His presence. God is a spirit. Amen? This isn't just Joey's saying or emotion. I say this out of the Word of God. John 4, 24. God is spirit. And those who worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. Amen. Who is the truth? The way and the life? Hallelujah. Who is our spirit? Holy Spirit. Amen. And it's in this anointing that when we bless God and we lift up the name of Lord Jesus Christ, when we plead the blood of Lord Jesus Christ. I pray tonight and I pray whoever is listening and whoever is watching that we have complete reverence in fear of God when we speak of the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. When we talk about the blood of Lord Jesus Christ, the blood of God Almighty, amen? This is not a game. Why would I allow the enemy to do what he wants to my life when God spilled his own blood on that cross through his perfect sacrifice for us, for me, to make a stand and say, stop. Enough. Devil, you cannot speak to me. Devil, you have no hold on this body. It's no longer flesh. I am a member of Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. You see, it's easy in, 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 in worship service, in fellowship, I was going to say fellowship. It's easy in fellowship. We just start making up our own words now, right? We got P3 up there, why not? It's easy in fellowship among agapenese. Right? Right? I am agapenese. Hallelujah. Agapenese. It's easy that, you know, yes, hallelujah, yes. But my question to you is, what happens when you leave here? Do we get quiet with the Lord? Or do we start speaking to ourselves? Notice the rabbit ears. There's no such thing. Either you belong to God, or you belong to this world. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He offered himself unblemished, perfect, perfect to God. He cleansed our mind from acts that lead to death so that we may serve the living God. Amen? I plead the blood of Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Let's move on. Praise God. 2 Corinthians 2, verse 14. I love you, Sister Kathy. So precious with that little angel just right there. Say it with me, personal. We're going to make this real, real personal. Amen? But thanks be to God who always leads us. Say it with me, me. Me. Right? It's one thing when the Word of God says leads us. But remember, we have to come face to face with Lord Jesus. We have to come face to face in owning up to everything. Right? I'm not the kind of brother that even if you did me wrong, I will repent and say sorry to my father because there was something, something, something. There was something in that relationship, right, that caused that person to get hurt that I'm taking full responsibility. You see, the devil wants you to say, oh, look what they did to me, right? We have to rebuke that thought. Listen, beloved child of God, even if that soul did not one thing, right? Even if that soul, let's just put it this way. Even if that soul, let's say it was their fault, 100%, wouldn't you rather plead the blood of Lord Jesus and say, Father, change me. Change me. Because I'm not going to judge this situation saying that they are wrong and I am right. You are the judge. Amen. Amen. And out of, re out of reverence, in worship unto you, Lord, I just come in full repentance. That I am sorry. I play games. Right? Whatever it is. Holy Spirit just had me say that right now. One of the one of the most powerful things in worship that we do in the jails, back when we used to go, we, of course, you know, we haven't gone. 
is when you're seated around a bunch of prisoners. And one of the last things I remember, Brother William was here, he'll testify, Brother Dave will testify because he was there, is when you look at these souls and you tell them, you can either glorify God right now in this moment in time, because right now he has shielded you, protected you to be intimate with him. Or you could have a bad chip on your shoulder. And as you sit here, you just allow the devil to keep heaping guilt, condemnation, shame. So the question that I have for you, beloved church family, and I asked this of the prisoners, I said, which one do you choose? And yes, some of them get upset and angry. But the truth of the matter is, you're here because you got caught, you did something wrong. Now, are you going to let that be your identity? Or are you going to crucify that and say, Lord Jesus, you're my identity. I'm going to serve the rest of my time. And when I get out of here, I'm going to allow your fruits, Holy Spirit, to live through my life. Amen? Amen. 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 The same thing goes for church, for worship service, for us sacrificing our time, our long days to come and to worship. The same thing applies. We get out of so-called, quote-unquote, there's the bunny rabbit here again, right? Being free, and we choose to be captive. We choose for this moment in time to be in God's presence and to say, I'm going to stay right here, and I'm going to worship you, Lord. You see, when you say that you're a captive of Lord Jesus Christ, that's why this picture is up on the screen. Is this truly your identity with Christ? That I am, I am locked up for Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, I'm locked up. That if this is my cell, this is where I be. <laughs> and this is just how it's going to be. And the glory of God is I know that even though I'm locked up and I'm a captive of Lord Jesus Christ, that all of His goodness, His mercy, His protection is right here with me. Amen? You see, being a captive of Lord Jesus Christ is really clear and simple. That we have a master. And that he's in charge of this body. Amen? Amen? That I cannot lash out. Yes, God gave me free will. Right? But the question is, will we take that free will as a captive and say, Father, emotions in the past, in my dead self, used to promote this kind of behavior. But now as your captive, I'm not going to try to resurrect the dead thing. It's impossible. I'm going to lay this down at your feet. Amen? I'm going to lay it down at your feet. Amen? So say with me, this is personal. As captives in Christ, triumphal procession, and uses us to spread the aroma of the knowledge of Him everywhere. Amen? So let me, let me ask you a question. Do you smell like Jesus? If I ask, if you're married, if I ask your wife, do you smell like Jesus? Would she say, oh yeah, he smells just like Jesus. Huh? If I ask your husband, lady, would your husband say, oh, my wife smells just like Jesus? Or do you stink? Huh? It's time to wash ourselves with the blood of Jesus. Amen? It's time to wash ourselves with the blood of Jesus. Amen? I don't want to stink. I rebuke that. Amen? I want to smell. I want Holy Spirit's presence. All, you know, just oozing out of my pores. Amen? The question is, does God know you? And the way to answer that truly is this. I'll read it to you. Love of the Father God. Does Father God know you as his child? Love of the beloved Son. Does Lord Jesus Christ know you? That you are his. That you are his property. It's not just our church shirt family, right? I have property of Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? And here is the most important. Yes, I said most important. Because this is the reason why Agape had to come and die on the cross and resurrect. Here it is. 
Let the love of the Holy Spirit abide in you. See, the love of the Holy Spirit is putting God first and foremost. Amen? And then putting others. But if you're saying yes to me and hallelujah, amen, but yet you're the one, it's all about you, 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 me, 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 there's something wrong. And I'm sorry, Mr. Wong or Mrs. Wong, I want to tell you how it is. Because you have become the idol in your life. It's a hard message to preach, amen? Listen, years ago when I hear it, I would, I would cringe. Why? Why would I cringe? Because Holy Spirit said, that's you! You want to serve yourself and not me. You want to do things your way and not my way. And guess what? God allowed me to continue to go down that road. And all it was was complete destruction and torment. But glory to God. The Lord Jesus Christ, Brother Jimmy, gives us the ability to repent. That it doesn't matter how fast you're going down that, that one way road in the wrong direction, God gives you the ability through Christ to repent and say, Stop! And immediately everything stops. And Father God's right there with open arms. No pun intended. Amen? <laughs> Hallelujah. Father God is right there going, Come on. Amen? Father God's right there going, Come on. Come on. I knew. I knew. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah, and God knew. God knew you were trying to stand up there. Amen. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Does God know you? Amen. This, say with me. This is personal. Let's move on. Protect. Hallelujah. Say with me. Protect. My question is how many of you want God's protection in your life? I would rather have God's protection. Hallelujah. Come on, Sister Rocky. I would rather have God's protection in my life than having a whole house filled with guns and ammo. Amen. What if I throw in a rocket launcher? I don't care. What about a tank? I don't care. I don't, I don't want none of that. Give me Jesus. Amen. Amen. Give me Jesus. Hallelujah. The blood of Jesus, Pastor. Amen. And the blood of Jesus covers us. Amen. Rest assured, beloved church family. Hallelujah. Open arms to me, church. We are covered by the blood of Lord Jesus Christ. This is Holy Spirit's church. Amen. There are no games here. Praise God, you can ask all of our leadership. Amen. You can ask anybody. Praise God. Agape, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Pastor Timothy said this. I love Pastor Timothy. Oh, I love Pastor Timothy. Saul's protege. Right? I, mean, I know his name is Paul, but Saul of Tarsus, right? Road to Damascus. Damascus. Lord Damascus, right? The glory of God. Amen. And Paul went to minister. Found this young kid, Pastor Timothy, I bet he was like 19, 20 years old. Young, but on fire for the Lord, amen? Had a Jewish mother and a Greek father. Jewish mother was just on fire for the Lord, amen? Even the grandmother, the word of God said, even the grandmother, the mother was praying for him, looking at the fruit, amen? How many grandparents we have in here? Glory to God, hallelujah. Plead the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ over them grandbabies in Jesus' name, amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many parents do we have in here? Amen? Um, Elder Lance, Holy Spirit said, just, just speak a blessing right now over all of our children in Jesus' name. Amen? I'm going to ask Elder Lance to just pray right now because Holy Spirit says so. You know what? Let's all stand up. Man. This is powerful. Hallelujah. And our elders are going to speak a blessing over your house and over our children, our children's children, generations to come in Jesus' name.
Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. You may be seated. Amen. So Pastor Timothy said this. At my first defense, no one came to my support, but everyone deserted me. Sounds familiar, Pastor? <laughs> right? Leaders, don't that sound familiar? I'm just being honest. Here it is, 2021, and it stands true. Right? Had people, oh yeah, I'll serve Jesus with you until we raptured out of here. The moment they get their feelings hurt, <laughs> right? It's like, what? What is? What is that? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Right? I mean, why? But listen, listen to what Pastor Timothy says. That praise God, Pastor and myself, all the elders. This is what we receive full heartedly. Listen to what he said. He says this: May it not be held against them. Listen to the magnitude in what this anointed brother says, Pastor Timothy. Look at, look at this. He says, all this is taking place, but he, he cries out to Father God and says, may this not be held against them. Meaning, I forgive them. Meaning, I don't harbor any malice or any unforgiveness. Meaning, Father God, I wash it clean with the blood of Jesus that I let it be. And this is the beauty of the power of forgiveness. Amen? Because now it is personal with Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? And this but, hallelujah, it's a big but, Pastor. Big but on the screen. Amen? Sister Anna, listen, big but on the screen. Yes, I like saying it. Big but on the screen. Big but. <laughs> this is a big but. The Lord stood by my side and gave me strength. Hallelujah. See, there's, there's many of us that want, our elders just prayed it out, right? There's so many of us that want God's presence in our life, His strength, His wisdom, His anointing, but then we get so caught up, frustrated, annoyed, angry. Why is it not happening? My question to you, my challenge is, is there unforgiveness in your heart? Right? Is there something that needs to be repented of, pleaded the blood of Lord Jesus over, getting rid of it, and then you watch it manifest? Amen? I learned a lot last year with Brother David and Sister Virginia gardening. I didn't do a bunch. I didn't. I hardly did anything. Just so busy. But praise God for all the time that we spent out there. And it's amazing because they showed me how you prepare the ground. And I was on this bush hall. What is it? Oh, it's a tiller. Dang, brother doesn't even know what a tiller is. It's not a bush hall. This is, this is more. The tiller is more. So the tiller is a bigger deal than a bush hall. Now, Sister Denise, come on now. We, we already went through this last Sunday, okay? You need to stop that, all right? Don't be all crunchy about that now, okay? Can I just say, I bush tilled it? I bush tilled this place. And that thing was just whipping me all around, right? I mean, it was, I, I got hurt. I mean, I did. I twisted my ankle. I, at one point, I was riding the thing. And not complaining, but I asked Brother David, what does this do? What? And he said, we got to get the ground ready, brother. We gotta break that ground up. We gotta get the ground ready. Because the Lord, and I love the way Brother David said, I try my best to copy you. The Lord plants the seed. Amen. And all the Lord wants is for us to plant that seed. And Holy Spirit will water it. Amen. Remember? Amen. And he says, every time I just try. And I, I, I'm just saying right now that we have to prepare. Our hearts, if we truly want the best of God. Because God is a merciful, loving Father. That He will not push Himself on you. Which means if you want to continue playing games with Him, God will let you play the games. It won't stop who He is. Can I get a hallelujah? It won't. He'll keep on running after you. He'll keep on knocking down doors. Amen. He will flatten everything just to get to you. But I pray in Jesus' name that we no longer want to play these games. Amen? 
so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed, and all the Gentiles might hear it. And I will deliver it from the mouth of the lion, the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me. Say with me, I am protected. I am protected. From every evil attack, and will bring me safely to his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever 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 and ever. Oh, it just gets gooder and gooder in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's give God praise. Hallelujah. I don't know how they got the picture of me hugging Jesus. But the internet is just absolutely incredible, amen? The internet is something else, praise God. When you talk about this protection, and it just, see, beloved church family, we are already in heaven. Amen. And God has convicted me because he says, I want you, Pastor, won't be accountable to this. I want you to start preaching that. That kingdom of heaven is within. Amen. And it is now, amen? amen. Let's start acting like it, hallelujah. Let's start living like it, amen. Hallelujah, let's start having this victory in Christ Jesus, amen. Let's rejoice, hallelujah. You know what's amazing is that so many times this past, oh, I'm tired. And I'm, I'm not speaking death over myself, but pray for me. I hear, I hear report after report, I'm feeling this way. The doctor said this, the doctor said that. And I feel like I'm a broken record. You tested positive for Jesus. Amen. You tested positive for Jesus. Amen. Rebuke the enemy. Rebuke that report. Amen. Well, the doctor said this. Listen, I'm anointed by Holy Spirit. The doctor ain't got nothing on me. Jesus is my Lord. I'm speaking life over you. Amen. I'm speaking life over you. Do you receive it? Amen. Hallelujah. It's incredible to me that, that somebody in a, in a white coat you know nothing about went to all so many. Listen, God blessed them with a brilliant mind. Amen. It's all the Lord. Everything good and perfect is from God. Amen. But well, what's amazing to me is that this person rolls up in there, says, You got this one, this one, this one. Look. And you look. Oh. So what does that mean? Well, you got this going on, you need to take this, and this is going to happen, this is going to happen. Okay. Am I hurting somebody's feeling? Because I'm here to tell you that Jesus Christ is Lord. Yeah. And He is the great physician, amen? So let, listen, no matter what you've gone through, maybe you went through something, amen? Maybe the doctor is helping, maybe medicine is helping. Praise God for that, but remember, praise God for that. The, the medicine didn't heal you. God healed me. Can you, can you say that with me? The medicine didn't heal me. God healed me. See, this is where we need to be as a church body. Amen? Because God said, I'm a jealous God. Don't you give glory to that medicine. Don't you give glory to that vitamin drink. I give glory to Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Brother just drooled right there. So we want to be... <laughs> we go through all this, right? I plead the blood of Jesus. I'm personal with Lord Jesus Christ. I am protected through the anointing power of His Holy Spirit. We go through the books in the New Testament. The books of the New Covenant Church. That's who we are, the New Covenant Church. The Holy Spirit says, I want you to put this in action so my church can see. So let us see P3 in action. Amen? That's letters right there. Let us see P3 in action, okay? That's let us. You guys remember the let us message, right? Let us, right? Let us. When I say let us, who is us? Right? When God created us in, when he said we create them in our image, who's our? Who's let us? Father, Son, Holy Spirit. So when I say us, see, it's funny because the devil wants us to be deceived thinking, well, it's just me. No, it's not. I'm let us. I'm lettuce. Soul, spirit, body. Amen? And it's in this life-changing revelation we know, I have an eternal soul that the devil is trying to take. And he wants this eternal soul in hell. But I have Holy Spirit. Amen. And when I plead the blood of Lord Jesus Christ, and I become personal with my Lord, Holy Spirit on the inside, His life overwhelms me. 
His presence overwhelms me. Have you ever been overwhelmed? Right? Amen. How many have been swimming? Right? How many of you went under and you just took in a bunch of water? See, everyone has stayed up, right? That's being overwhelmed. <laughs> right? That's being overwhelmed. <clears throat> right? To the point where like, you can't be out of here. Right? God wants you to be overwhelmed with His Spirit. Because it's in this overwhelming anointing where you're just in awe of the love of the Father. The love of the Father that He loves you this much. Well, how much, Brother Joy? Where you been? Where you been? Look. Let's see P3 in action. Exodus 12 says this. Now the blood, say with me, the blood. blood. Remember, we plead the blood of Jesus. Amen. Now we're picking up in Exodus 12, and this is when God, hallelujah, Father was telling, come on now. He told Moses, told all the elders, right? Tell them, this is order. Because when I remove my presence, the destroyer will come. You see, there's the significant difference of the Old Testament, Old Covenant, versus the New Testament and the New Covenant. Before Lord Jesus Christ, everything was blamed on God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But what we fail to realize when you know and believe the Bible from the beginning, from Genesis to Revelation, front to back, agape, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. That's why Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Old Testament, Old Covenant, Father. Here comes the Son, Lord Jesus Christ. And now here we are, Holy Spirit. Can I get an amen? amen. Can I get an amen? amen? See, this, this, this rebukes and goes against every kind of theology and people trying to preach all kinds of craziness. Amen? This is the order of God. And once again, in the Old Covenant, Old Testament, whenever something bad will happen, immediately, oh, that's God's fault. Or God is mad at me. Let me explain this clearly. Let me explain this clearly. You remember the illustration earlier that I am a captive of Lord Jesus Christ? Oh, I'm for eternity. I'm his captive, right? This means that this is my jail cell. You remember, right? Right? But he gives us free will to say, I want to I want to be up here. Why? I don't know. That soul has their reasons. I'm not judging nobody. But look at what happens. When I'm out of the will of God, now I'm completely open to this world. And when the world attacks, because what does the devil want to do? Steal, kill, and destroy. What happens when it happens? God, why? Why, God, would you do this to me? Are you kidding me? I pray in Jesus' name. Say with me, no more. No more. Now the blood, say with me, I plead the blood of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus. Shall be a sign. Look at this, look at this. This is the blood from the hyssop branch. i just show you this picture real quick. This is what they had to do. They had to sacrifice a perfect little lamb. And they put the blood, right? You guys know this, right? Say with me, I plead the blood of Jesus. Let's get back into the scripture, amen? Shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, say with me, this is personal. This is personal. Look at this. I could have put graphics together that are really scary and bloody, but the Holy Spirit said, no, this is what he wanted. Because he's the teacher. Amen? Not Joey. He's the teacher. You can see that family in there worshiping, right? You can see that family like we are now. Hallelujah. Beloved church family, let's not get religious with the Lord. This is what we're doing right now. We were covered by the blood. We're worshiping Lord Jesus Christ. So my question to you is, how important is it that we come in fellowship together? Amen? Amen. See, I love it. I love Sister Rocky's face. She's like, this is all we got. Until we're raptured out here, this is all we have. Amen? 
Say with me, it's personal. Right. And there's that blood on that doorway. Amen? And this, I love that because it reminds me of a stop sign. I pray in Jesus' name, I say this for Facebook too, that when we come across a stop sign, we no longer just see a stop sign, we see the blood of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I speak that over you right now. Hallelujah. I speak over your eyes right now that wherever, whenever you come to a stoplight, you see the blood of Jesus. And you, you're reminded through Holy Spirit's anointing the power you have to rebuke the enemy. I love hanging around with worshipers. That's all I fellowship with. Amen. I mean, I'm talking about the anointing of Holy Spirit in and through you all. For one and four, the first and foremost is the love of the Father. Amen. Amen. How much you love the Father just oozes. Amen. You smell good. Oh, you smell so good. Just want to, right? Like tacos. Say when we stop. Ah. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. Hallelujah. And the plague. Satan. That's the plague. Satan. That's the plague. Satan. Corona. Or COVID. Whatever name you want to give them. Right? Depression. Anxiety. Addiction. Abuse. That's Satan. The devil. The plague. Say with me. I rebuke. I rebuke. The, plague. the plague. In Jesus name. Jesus. And the plague shall not be on you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. How many of you know right now? That after the rapture takes place, this land, this whole world is going to be struck. Amen. If you don't know, well now you know. It's time right now to get right with the Lord. Amen, beloved church family. I know who I'm talking to. Wednesday night, praise God. Hallelujah, you guys are here on Wednesday evening. Thank you, Jesus. Some of you worked like 30 hours straight, like Elder Lance. You still made it here. Praise God. Bless the Lord. Say it with me, I am protected. I am protected. all because of the blood of the Lamb. To be protected, it was all because of the blood of the Lamb. And because of the blood of the Lamb, it became personal. This is symbolic of what Holy Spirit taught us this past Sunday with the circle of life. Amen? But God didn't want me to put the, the, the arrows up there. So we tie all this together because God wanted to show you the plead, personal, protect in action. But then we also are reminded as far as what, how God opened up this worship service tonight in P3, right? Public, private, partnership. And as you guys do, I just said, Father, it'd be really cool, because we were at this point, I said, Father, it'd be really cool if you just go ahead and tie this all together, even though I don't know where everything else is going. And we choose not to know, right, Pastor? We just trust in you, Lord, and we're going to do everything that you say to worship you, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. How many of you know when you just trust in the Lord, oh, life just gets gooder and gooder in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, the devil wants you to worry. The devil wants you to be right, concerned. Somebody tried to use that word with me. They try to mask that word, worry, with concern. Oh, I'm just concerned. No. Holy Spirit done told me we need to rebuke this fear. Don't be religious with God. God knows us. Amen. He knows our next breath. He knows how many breaths we're going to take. He knows our every move. So how much does it bless him when we're continuously as beloved children of God just being transparent and honest in worship and saying, Father, here I am. Change me, Lord. I messed up. Forgive me, Father. Remember, I know I'm forgiven. Right? Remember, beloved children, I know I'm forgiven because Jesus is my Lord. But it doesn't stop there in the worship. Right? Amen? It's in that repentance where I know I'm forgiven, Father, but I don't stop. Speak to me, Lord. Change me. I never want to hurt you again. I never want to hurt you again. Equip me, Lord, because you, you're the only one that can do it. Amen? So this is what God showed us. Look at how this lines up. When you're public in your love for Lord Jesus Christ and you're bold in pleading His holy and precious blood. Say with me, the blood, blood is, applied to me. is applied to me. 
for eternity. When you're public this way, in private, in private, Holy Spirit will bless you with His praises. How many of you want the praises of the Lord? How many of you want? Right? How many of you want God being so happy with you that as His presence flows through your life, you can feel His anointing and say, thank you. Because this is who God is now. Everyone needs to hear this. This is who God is. He's the Father who loves us. He's God Almighty. But my goodness, all He wants is children that want a blessing. And you, when you become private, when you become personal, right? When you make it personal with the Lord, He promises you that in His eternal partnership with you, that you will forever be protected. That you're always covered by his holy and precious blood. Amen. Stand up with me, please. As always, there's some of us, there's many of us actually, that yes, the worship service is great, it's all Holy Spirit's word. But there's many of us that just want to get to this altar. Amen. And I know that because I'm one of them. I'm one of them. It's one, of the, it's one of the greatest things the Holy Spirit has blessed us with, that this, the altar is always open. But I encourage you tonight, that before we leave here tonight, will you plead the blood of Lord Jesus Christ? Will you, will you come to this altar, and as, you, as your knees hit the ground, I declare over your life, over your family, over every house, over every year, over Facebook, that when your knees hit the ground, that all of hell shudders because it feels and sees, it smells the blood of Lord Jesus Christ. And as you're on your knees, I pray that Father God will cover you with a fresh anointing, a double portion of his holy presence, that his holy, his holy blood will cover you from the top of your head to the soles of your feet for all of eternity. And I pray the Holy Spirit's presence in your life will be greater today than ever before. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Let's come to the altar, praise God.